Thanks for staying with us. Now, the national leader of the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC, Bola Tinubu, has said that it is too early to talk about which section of the country will get the party's presidential slot in 2023. He also said talks and plans of secession should be discarded and that good governance should be the focus at this moment. This announcement is coming five months after posters campaigning for the former governor of Lagos State was seen in different parts of the country. Still with me in the studio to continue the conversation is Daniel Dupe, legal practitioner. Pleasure to have you still here. Um, he is, I mean, this is not the first time we're hearing about the presidency 2023, but he's talking tough. Just the other day we had of Bakari talking about secession. Let's focus on Tinubu who is saying it will be a mere restless talk. Is it really, at this point, restless talk to be talking about the presidency of 2023? Um, I think yes and no. No, it is not restless talk. It is important to talk about secession. It's important to talk about um, the plans and who is, to, who is next President. to come to presidency and all of you. It's a very important discussion, very topical national issue, very germane. However, what is being reported in the media, the way we, we have gone about it so far, well, to some people, has made it look like restless talk, really. Because when you start talking about issues like zoning, like the presidency choosing who to succeed, or the president choosing who to succeed him, those are not the kind of things you should be saying, you know. Those are not the kind of things. I think it should be left for the parties, you know, because at the end of the day, it's, it's on the platform of parties. Let the APC judge itself. Has it performed creditably well? Do they think they deserve second term? I mean, um, do you think they deserve to return to power? Yeah, I mean, aside that's, from that's them the returning to power, I think that the conversation now is who will be the candidate representing these parties? The issue of zoning is, I mean, that's where the, the, the shift is going. Uh, could you shed a little more light on why is this zoning conversation so important in Nigerian politics? Oh, well, um, our politics is so complex that it's a case of we not take it all. You know, it's either you get it and you're good, or you don't get it and you're in trouble. And so, you know, we have a lot of work to do in that regard. Our politics should not continue to be like that. That's the main challenge that we have, you know, and that's why every, you know, you know, it doesn't matter how long a particular, you know, geopolitical zone has been in power, they still want, they, they love the taste because it gives you access to control a lot of things and what have you. So that's the basic, the main problem we have. But it shouldn't be, you know, I, I subscribe to the belief that, look, let the best person govern us, wherever the person comes from. You know, it doesn't matter if they've been in power for eight years. Let the best person go. I also admit and understand that, look, our politics is sensitive. You know, people, we still do not have a sense of oneness. We are over how many, you know, ethnic groups. So, you know, so I think we can have, you know, proper balancing. I think I've always advocated that, look, let the central be as decentralized as possible. Let's make it unattractive. Let it not be that, oh, once you're not in power, you're in trouble. Let the regions be allowed to go at their pace. That way, you will, it will not be a case of do or die, oh, my region or my geopolitical zone or my ethnic group must be the one to, you know. So if we do that, we need to de-emphasize it. But well, if, if we are de-emphasizing, let's be realistic. At this moment, the two major political parties are the APC and the PDP. The others are... There are some that are also coming up, but these are the two that seem, when you talk about opposition, the next thing people talk about is the PDP. They are not the only opposition, but we talk about them. So if you're saying that it should be left free, do you see other smaller parties being able to bring candidates who will be able to impress Nigerians with not only their leadership ability, but their antecedent before coming out there? You see, that's my worry. I've observed that in this for the past how many cycles of election, we always wait to one maximum two years before election before any kind of serious movement, any kind of serious involvement has been carried out. It shouldn't be. And I'm saying this more for the less I don't want to call them lesser political parties, the smaller political parties really. The, this is the time for them to to win the hearts and minds of Nigerians. I know it takes a lot of resources, it takes a lot of energy, a lot of funds and whatever to do that, but that's the only way you can be taken seriously. Now the government of the day is in power, you see the way they are doing things, you should be more visible now. It is not when it's a, a, a year to election then you now start only other scatter. Nobody will take it seriously that way. I think that you know, if for them to get any kind of visibility, for them to get, for them to be taken seriously, for them to gain any kind of ground, this is the time for them to start being more visible, taking action, speaking up, you know, 
provide Daniel, solutions. Are you know that there are some big names that are already being thrown around. Uh, in the intro, we talked about posters sometime last year of Tinubu uh, running for presidency come 2023. We also know that there are other names. The presidential candidate of the PDP, although he hasn't made any mention of 2023, his supporters will be clamoring for him to come again. And then when you take all of these into cognizance, they are not the only big wigs, of course. There are other people that will be showing interest, that people are already pushing to come for the 2023 But Who will get this ticket? And again, I go back to the conversation about zoning. What role should it be playing still now? Zoning is a very sensitive issue, all right? Um, and it's because of the nature of our nature as, 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 as a people, our history, our background. But again, I still strongly believe that it shouldn't be the focal point. Zoning shouldn't be the focal point. What the Nigerians should be focused on right now. I understand the you know sensitivity about it. You know, there are, there are past regions of this country that have not produced a president in a long, long time, since, almost since independence or so. You know, and, and, and I understand that it's really sensitive. However, I think what we need to do is look at the credentials of the person. If the right person, and, and that's why I say, you rightly mentioned that, look, there are big names that we cannot ignore, who are, you know, who are flouting here and there, you know, the large followings and what have you. But if you, if any Nigerian thinks that they have the pedigree, they have the experience, not necessarily political experience, but leadership experience, because that's what we really need. This is the time for them to try and gain ground. My, my argument and my worry is that they always wait to the last minute. So, so what do so, you, okay. So this is the time for them to make a case. Whilst the, the, the popular ones are, you know, are being supported and, you know, the supporters are saying, yeah, clamor. if you know that you're good, put a, a team together. It's a, it's a marathon race. It's not something you just start. It's not a spring that you start two years to election. It's a marathon race. Put your team together, no matter how small. Be visible. Let's see what you can do. Be making a case. You know, you know, provide solutions, talk about national issues, talk about the alternatives, the, the, the alternative policies that should be put in place. Those are the ways, in my opinion, where they, how they can, you know, gain ground and, you know, win the heart and mind of Nigerians. So session is um, a conversation that was brought to the surface again. The conversation, we actually had that conversation a few days ago um, in the news here at Plus TV Africa. We asked the leadership coach what his take was on the issue of secession when Bakari brought it up and people are saying that uh, Buhari has said he wouldn't be running again for office but shouldn't he be interested in who becomes president after him what's your take on this conversation I think Buhari should not be interested in who becomes the president after him I think he should be interested in how the person who's, who's going to succeed him is chosen in due process is you should be interested in ensuring that because the election that will come after him will be his legacy in, in a sense you should be interested in ensuring that due process is followed you should be interested in who the reason why africa is where it is the reason why many other countries in africa are backward today is because you know people stay in power for, for forever and then when it's when they have a choice when it's time for them to leave they try to unpick you know whoever comes to the or they try to support it should not up to you the idea of democracy is majority rules. Is when the, the will of the majority, you know, comes to pass. So the presidency, or the president rather, has only one vote. It's only one individual. I know he has a lot of influence, he has a lot of following, what have you. But what should be paramount and uppermost in his mind right now is the process that produces whoever will succeed. Well, he has actually person. come out to say not that he, although he won't be in partisan politics, he will be uh, interested in a, in ensuring a credible, that's, fair. That's process also, that's, that's also of true. election yeah. but then again you think about the past leaders we've had in this country that can he afford to stay silent we have the likes of good luck jonathan we have obas and joe we have go um we have uh, abdul salami they still come out and play roles when necessary in this country they speak up on issues that affect the country even though they're not in power his decision not to be in partisan politics do you think that should include not being a part of the growth of this country after his time? No, no, no nobody says he should even be. Let's start to start with that in partisan politics. But that would mean he will still be a part of politics. No, he can't be a part of politics. I'm just saying that he should not influence the process in the sense that he should not pick who the person 
He should, he should not have a God's son or a, a, the anointed one. That has been a lot for a long time. We do not want that anymore. He should not have a say in terms of the person. But yes, who says he should? I mean, even in civil crimes, people still, former presidents support candidates, you know, but not when they are the incumbent and then they want to, you know, he should, because uh, because this process is supposed to be as free and fair as possible. He should. He can still be a member of his party. You can still, you know, you can still, you know, but above all of that, he should make it to be seen to all, to all and sundry, that the process is fair, is transparent, that he's, he's not using you know, his powers as being the incumbent president to influence the instrumentality of state, the police, all those who are going to play a role, the, 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 the INEC, the commission, what have you, is not influencing them. Those are things that we do not want. And the truth is, if he is really so interested and he, he wants to do those things, we know he can do it, and it will be very bad for us as a people because it then means that the will of the majority, the will of Nigerians, is being subverted. That's what we are crying and clamoring that we do not want. Of course, it can be in politics. Of course, it can be his party APC, he can support them in his ways, but he should now not use that influence to affect the political process, the all the things that, that needs to be done. It's okay for you to for him to I mean I even expect him to play a reconciliatory role, you know, make sure that the process is being done well and all that view. Is that's the part of the political process, you know, you know I mean, a couple, a number of uh, the former president that you mentioned, some of them, that's the kind of way that they play now, you know. They, they try to at least make sure that, oh, let's do it the right way. This is their nation, what have you, you know. I, that's the kind of uh, participation I expect from him. Not for him to endorse a candidate and say this, because if he does that, you know, it's, it will be sending a signal to the to all the key stakeholders, you know, in the election. And then they might say, oh, this is the another one. Maybe we should just fall in line. We do not want that because that would be unfortunate for us. I mean, if you remember how he came to power, it was the first time when the, the incumbent party will be losing and then you know so if the former president if the president then didn't do the right thing if the president wanted to force his will of nigerians he won't allow that to happen so let if his party loses let him accept it you know you know but let's but let me just ensure that it does not influence the process in a way that will be detrimental to the will of nigerians well. uh, while you were talking i was thinking about the next generation of leaders um in the 2020, uh, 2019 elections we had some young people uh, come up to show interest the not too young to run bill um, was passed That's into law and we saw quite a number of young people show interest in the presidency actually and uh, since then uh, some of them have gone quiet mm. when you talk about ensuring that we have antecedents do you see some of these young people that participated in the 2019 elections coming up again in 2023 we know they will come up and my only worry is that and, and i'm not representing myself because we're all nigerians really the worry is just that you know it's always too little too late you know and who says we must start with the presidency what happened to the council what happened to the local government chairman there is no you money there it's not about money, it's about service. And these are the kind Is of, it really about service in this country? Have we had service. service from the government, successive governments that we've had? We've had a um, few sparks here and there, few people who managed to distinguish themselves, very few, but those ones have proven that it can be done, you know, that you can truly go there and truly serve. There are not many at all, they are probably less than five percent, but we've truly had people who have shown that look, you can enter political office and Truly serve but aren't people. you scared that the system will swallow these people? And because as it is now, I'm a journalist, I'm in the media, I hear a lot of what's going on, and I am expressed as much as I am hopeful about the future of this country and the leadership of this country, I am honest enough to talk to myself and say, do we really have people who are out for the interest of Nigerians and not the game of politics? Tunubu himself acknowledged that it is intoxicating, it is powerful. Do we really have those kind of people? We do. I, I have no doubt. You know, I, for one, I, 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 I'm, I'm a firm believer in the prosperity and progress of Nigeria. You know, I mean, for me, that's more important than anything else. I know that I want to believe you are, you know, I'm mean, a lot of people are like, like that, you know. So, um, whether we are wielding as much influence as we should is a, is a different question, but truly, there are people, in fact, there are people who are closer to the corridor of power than we think and who actually have that kind of right mindset, you know. They exist, they are just not enough, they are not many enough to, to, to assert, you know, sufficient amount of, of, of influence and, and force. But those people surely exist, and it's just up to us. Because if you think about it, Nigeria is our home. We don't have any choice. We can go anywhere, we can, you know, but at the end of the day, this is our home. We have to make it work. If we do not make it work, what do we gain? Like we say, you know, like popular parlance, you know. So we do not have a choice. We have to make effort. We, 
we we do not have it. This is our this is our future. You know, the, the, the decisions that are being made, you know, by the politicians, by those in government, in the courts of power, they all have a way of affecting the entire nation because they are, they have a way of affecting you know our future. You know, generations yet on, but even our own future. You know, they keep telling us that you know we are the future tomorrow, but we know tomorrow is now. You know, so <laughs> we, we 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 do not have a choice than to be more assertive, than to be more proactive. And now I, I, more, I, than yes, more than ever before, and I believe that people who have the genuine interest of Nigeria at arts are more than you think. It's just a matter of finding them out. Well, thank you very much. We have people like you still. <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the program. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. All right. Thank you for staying with us. Up next is our plus report detailing the expectations of Nigerians as regards the year 2020. After that, I'll be giving you my take. Do stay with us. The year 2020 has kicked off with more expectations of Nigerians from the federal government. In 2009, the Nigerian government released a proposed Vision 2020 document stating that by 2020, Nigeria will be one of the top largest 20 economies in the world. Whilst Nigerians are waiting to see how this will turn out, Plus TV Africa had conversations with some Nigerians to find out their assessment of the present government and what they expect in the year 2020. Uh, yeah, it's just starting, but based on 2019, yes, our income, our income is very low, but the government are still working towards it. I believe that this 2020 will be more better than 2019. My expectation from Buhari in uh, March, uh, what we want from him is to continue the good work he's doing in eradicating all these uh, embezzlement and others. And we want him to do much more in economy building. Let him pump money into the circulation, let different economy activities be going on in the country. There are so many things I expect for him to do, like um, the good rules, because the good rules are supposed to be at work by nine o'clock, but the traffic will let him to be at work early. So the good roads makes a lot of spend a lot of time on the road before I get to the island, because I stay out somewhere at Baragri. So if I get to the work, so it's almost like 12 o'clock before I get to work. But at least when you can improve the good roads, when the road is okay, then everything can move very well. I just want to like emphasize things about how the country is right away now. Now, if you check back in those years, things are more okay than right now that we are. Now we see that we will find it very, very difficult to feed and other things. Look at how we the young, we the youth are struggling one way or the other to get cash. It wasn't like this before, cash was flowing. Now our president closed the border. We can't, we can't import goods and we can't take out goods, which is very, very bad. We are lacking a lot. We in Nigeria are expecting from Buhari, but what we are seeing now is different entirely. Look at the Nepal issue now. They just increase the tariff without anything. And there's not even sufficient light. You got, Nigeria is not enjoying 24 hours of light. And they are increasing the tariff. What do we expect? Look at the standard of living. Food, the closed border. Up to now, there are food, uh, food prices increasing. The standard of living is very high. We are expecting that since it came in last year, all these things we are supposed to have come down. But up to now, the price of everything is high. We don't know where we are going to... Uh, going to in this country. Not to scare you, but I do believe we live in very dangerous times. The bickering between rival political parties while entertaining is absolutely useless. And I agree with those who assert that it smacks of insensitivity that while many are dying, the conversation is not on how to avoid more debt, but on whose fault it is. There is an apparent lack of accountability when it comes to the issue of security in this country, and this just has to change. It has to. What happens to the humongous sums of money provided in our budget every year and disbursed to the different security operations as well as the operatives? I'll tell you what, not much if you glance at the pages of the newspapers. There is need for sincerity of purpose and a committed political will backed by a high level of accountability by our leaders at the highest level of governance if anything is to be achieved beyond the rhetoric we find today. Our very existence as a nation depends on it. That's my take.
Thank you for watching today's program. Please share your thoughts on our social media handles at Plus TV Africa and you can find me on Twitter at Felicity underscore E. Until next time, please be well.